we are now switching to Denmark, and I'm happy to introduce Sarah Wilkins to you. She's the digital editor at Alt. Do, we, do I call it Alt? Alt, 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 yes. Alt DK, um, who has built on top of its strengths in an existing segment to create Alt, now Denmark's favorite online destination for women. Exactly. Thank you very much. My name is Sarah Wilkins. I'm the digital editor of Alt DK, which is a website owned by Egmont, who publish some of the most well-known weeklies and monthly magazines in Denmark. And as was just introduced, I'm here to talk about how LTK became Denmark's favorite online destination for women. So I just need my little beeper. Okay. Well, three years ago, this was our outset. We had eight different women's magazines that each had their own website, their own web editor, and their own team of journalists. Now, all of these brands were sitting physically far away from each other in our organization. They were hardly really working together at all. They didn't really feel like a team. They were even producing content that was competing with each other because the articles either had the same headline or dealt with the same subject and was just rel being, rel being read by a relatively small audience online. Now, our slogan at Ekman Publishing is that we bring stories to life. But back then, it didn't really seem like our content had a particularly long digital life or our articles didn't seem to have, which is why we decided to merge all of our websites together to form one big new site, AltDK, which looks like this. Uh, now, there were three main reasons for doing this. First of all, higher SEO value, because it, of course, made very little sense for our brands to be competing with each other. We wanted one good version of the story, and so we decided to focus 100% on SEO optimizing this version of the story in order to position ourselves as a much stronger platform and ensure better rankings on Google. The second reason for merging was broader audiences. We knew that merging our sites would enable us to reach many more Danish women, partly because of SEO value, as I mentioned before, but also because we would more easily be able to cross-post our AltDK content on our eight different Facebook pages for each of the magazines. More importantly, in addition to this, we believed that the credibility from our strong print brands would sort of give our new super site a so-called quality stamp of approval that would appeal to a much larger group of Danish women. Uh, it also made sense from a financial point of view to focus all our editorial and technical resources on one big strong site instead of many smaller weaker ones, of course. So, how did we begin? Well, in order to avoid continued competition between our eight brands online, we decided that we would organize our content into five strong sub-niches, which are lifestyle, food, fashion, health, and kids. Each niche would have its own niche editor, who would then upload relevant content from each of our brands, as well as producing original LTK content. So for instance, Lifestyle would have content from Alt for Damerne, from Eurowoman, from Yemel, et cetera, so would health, so would kids. It would sort of be a buffet. They could choose from all of our brands, as well as producing this original LTK content. So perfect plan, right? Well, we had a few bumps in the road along the way, too. Um, we mainly experienced two big organizational issues throughout this process. The first one was teamwork issues internally within LTK. Because as I mentioned before, we took the editors from the old print uh, magazine websites and turned them into these new niche editors. But by then, they were so used to working for their own brands that they felt sort of very not very invested in our new big site, and at least not in the same way. They were lacking a sort of shared goal, and they were lacking this team spirit that's absolutely crucial when you start a project like this. Second organizational issue we faced was LTK versus print, because in the beginning, there was quite a lot of resistance from our print editors, as you might imagine. Um, they worried that LTK would harm their brand identities, steal their readers, scare advertisers away, and generally worried that their magazine would have much less of a web presence than it had before when they had their own magazine website. Uh, we also experienced some technical issues, which I won't go that much into right now, but when you merge eight websites to one, you face a lot of technical issues. Um, so if you ever 
do anything similar, please have strong servers, because we learned the hard way that that was uh, not a walk in the park. So how do we solve these two big organizational issues? Well, this is where the question why comes into the picture. And I'm sure many of you know this model. It's been extremely helpful to us throughout this process, because in order to solve these organizational issues, of course, we decided that we needed a why. We needed to understand our new common purpose online. Why were we even relevant? What was our mission? Now, the whole digital team actually was very involved in this brainstorm from the beginning. And we decided together that our mission, our why, was to be the digital first choice for women in Denmark. We also agreed that uh, the goal was to be a relevant reference point to as many Danish women as possible. Um, and we made sure to talk this why through with each of our niche editors one-on-one -on -one, to make sure that they, know, they knew exactly what stories to publish in order to live up to this new common goal of becoming Denmark's digital first choice for women. Uh, so it may, it may seem extremely banal, but knowing why we were put into the world proved absolutely crucial for the teamwork that's since blossomed at LDK. Um, because it meant that people suddenly felt like they were part of a team and they felt invested in a whole other way than they were before. But our why was actually also instrumental in another important way. Back to a very important word, SEO. Because it made us realize that if we wanted to be the digital first choice for women in Denmark, we of course needed to be read by as many Danish women as possible. And it made it very clear from the outset that our whole team had to be really invested in SEO on all levels. Um, we needed to write stories for our readers' sake, not our own sake, and we needed to make sure that we were easy to find on Google. And as you can see here, we managed to get the first position on our page about children, motherhood, pregnancy. We have many more of these, and we want to continue to work to get as many as possible. Um, but of course, this whole way of working was demanded a completely change of mindset within our, for our journalists and our editors. Um, because SEO is a different way of working editorially, as many of you know, I'm sure. Because good SEO content is content that is Googled a lot, so a story's relevance is often determined by the time of year and not so much traditional news criteria. Since our readers, they Google sunscreen every summer, flu symptoms every winter, Christmas decorations every December, and so on. Um, so this meant that tidying up old content, sort of SEO optimizing it, is often worth more for us than producing new content, um, since our readers will have a better chance at finding it on Google. So having a clear why from the outset made this whole transition much easier than feared, because the digital team, again, understood that SEO was crucial in order to live up to our common new goal, and that competing internally would basically get us nowhere. So how are things going today? Well, LDK was created in January of 2017, and we've seen continued rise in traffic and user numbers since then. Last year, we grew on all parameters. We saw 100% growth in page views, more than 60% growth in user numbers, and that made us Denmark's favorite online destination for women. Um, this January, we reached an all-time high in user numbers, and LDK was named the seventh biggest media site by Danish Online Index, which now means that we're competing with some of the biggest newspaper and media sites in Denmark, which we're, of course, extremely proud of, because we're not just competing with the other women magazines right now. We've sort of leveled our game up a bit. And money-wise, I mean, we all know that uh, the digital advertising model is uh, under great pressure. Some would say it's even broken. But actually, LDK is a neutral case with a positive tendency, we would say, because we're actually seeing a rise in digital advertisers in a very tough market at the moment. So that's some good news. Um, and we believe that this, no doubt, has to do with the fact that we have extremely strong print brands who, that have sort of proved to, to survive this online merge, plus that we now have an, a new ability to target readers more precisely and to reach a much broader audience than we were able to do with one single brand on one single website. Um, very importantly, very unexpectedly, uh, the teamwork between print and digital has blossomed and is now better than it's ever been before. Um, it's the first time ever that people in all of our organization know what LDK is, 
They know what our purpose is, and it's sort of become part of the culture in a way that it hasn't been before. And we see this every week in the digital team, um, because we now receive story tips and emails from our print editors who ask us, what headline should we use? What person should we interview? They, based on our online statistics, they want to know what's the success online. Um, we also make sure that we send out monthly feedback to print, so we let them know what stories have been most successful for us, and hopefully they can be inspired by that. So people have sort of realized, finally, one might add, that we're on the same team, we have the same goal, which is to write good stories that are being read by as many people as possible. Uh, finally, our dedication to SEO has also made us more effective, because as I'm sure many of you know, you know, if you have a, a site with high SEO value, SEO value, you have a lot of organic traffic that keeps pouring into that site. And so that means that we have more time to produce original LTK content. Um, we see now that our stories are being quoted by other media much more than they used to be. And we have just generally more time to produce quality journalism that our readers enjoy, which in the end, of course, is what it's all about for us. So looking forward, this year and beyond. We, of course, have some goals. First one is stronger partnerships. We'd like to build three to five strong partnerships with the commercial partners and e-commerce businesses that both sides find valuable, also our readers, of course. We want a better UX experience. We want a better, better site, a stronger design. We want it to be a more pleasurable experience to read our content. And we want people to feel like they want to come back again and again, of course. But maybe the most important challenge lying ahead of us is the fact that we, of course, want LDK to become a super brand in its own right. Um, we want people to visit us directly like they visit the big newspaper sites right now and, uh, and become less dependent on social media, social media especially in the future so, we, so that we can bring even more stories to life. Um, and just, yeah, last slide, it's just the fact that we're actually only 10 people producing this SEO content and original LTK content online right now, so it doesn't have to take an army. Fewer hands can actually make it work. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Just keep st sticking with the last slide. The two <laughs> yes. guys are the tech guys. Yeah, this mess is our tech guy. Tech guy, and okay, this, this one? tech boss. Okay, kind of yes. tech boss, okay. Yes. <laughs> and the, the, the females are editors? Uh, some of them are editors, some of them are producers. Ah, the producers. most important. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Do you have a question? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. okay. First, you please, then. Oh, oh, no, we start in the back because the mic is there. Is that okay for you? Sorry. Okay, very back. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, I'm the vice president of content of Semana. It's an independent Colombian a editorial journalism group yeah. and I have two questions number one it seems that your development is more PC than mobile what is your mobile strategy or maybe I, I didn't no I no, it's definitely mobile very okay. much so I can just I actually pull the newest numbers for you just so uh, to make sure that because we have 60% um, of our traffic comes from mobile and 22 desktop tablet 17% so, mm -hmm. so we're looking very much at mobile. And mm -hmm. the second question is, yeah. how are you monetizing? Is this mainly an advertisement or? Yes, I mean, we, we, well, as I mentioned before, we have partnerships. Egmont has partnerships with several e-commerce businesses. So we work very closely with them. We want to build that portfolio of partners, of course. Um, but our content is, is free online at the moment. We're not, mm -hmm. we don't have subscriptions. Uh, but we do have advertisers, of course, and that is um, going well, better than um, one might fear. But if you if you have a, your whatever the story is, and there's the jacket I could purchase directly from your page, but you don't get a share if people are then doing e-commerce from your site and going well, to. Well, the e-commerce partnerships are mainly so. So we have we have journalists hired, and we have a SEO. Yeah, people that mainly work with SEO optimizing, but also writing uh, advertorials for e-commerce partnership partners. So, for instance, Egmont has a, a very strong partnership with Swedish uh, Bayan and Cotton, which uh, which uh, you know sell kitchenware. Uh -huh. And so, Black Friday, for instance, we uh, we had a big uh, partnership with them where we produced some content that stories around stories around that, right? Yeah. So that's what we, we also do, as well as produce quality journalism, of course. So we sort of balance that, and that's a way that's. 
thing we're looking at to do more in the future. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have more questions in the back, I think. And then we go more straightforward. Was there another question? Yes, here in the sixth row. No, a bit more to the front, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just felt like I was missing part of the origin story of how, uh, how all of these magazines ended up under one umbrella to begin with. Were, were they all founded by the same people or was there Yes, yeah, so, so we are, we are Egmont Publishing. We have uh, many different magazines and we, we, we decided that we would merge our eight women's magazines because we could see that each of them were pretty weak alone and we saw a potential in, in, in sort of merging them together, but mainly because, as I mentioned before, SEO value. We could see that that would strengthen strengthen our muscles, you know, just to collect every, everyone on one site. But we also have many more magazines, ma male magazines, food magazines, etc. but we're looking at the, the women's ones right now. So that's the sort of back, backdrop of the story. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. It, then th we have two questions here in the second row, one at the right and then one at the left. Hi, Hi, I'm Laura Rowe from Immediate Media in London. Yes. Um, I wondered, you mentioned that the, some of the print editors were nervous when you merged and felt a bit threatened. Were there any casualties um, as a result of your growth? And also, have there been any, any views to convert your digital readers back into print readers, print readers, either in a separate new magazine or have you seen increased subscriptions to the existing print magazines? Um, the, the first, the first part of the question again. The casualties. The ca oh yeah, the casualties. Well, we know we haven't seen that. Of course, we understood the worried, the worries in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the classic thing is that this is going to scare our readers away, etc. Um, but we haven't seen any casualties. Um, actually, we make, we see, on the other hand, truly that we can sort of boost each of the brands more, much more effectively online right now because we have a lot of events. Each of our women's magazines mm -hmm. have events, for instance, um, women's runs, etc. And now we have, we have sort of more power to advertise this and to reach audiences through our different Facebook pro uh, pages, for instance. So it doesn't just target this one, one magazine that we have, but many other age groups. So we can sort of target them more effectively and more, yeah, more precisely. So, so we, we see it as a win-win along mm -hmm. yeah, part mm -hmm. of the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the second question, yeah. paying back to the print? Yes, I mean, we, uh, we, try, we do that a lot, actually, and I think there's room for improvement, of course. Every week right now, uh, one of our biggest women's magazines is, uh, is called El Fadeimene, and, every when, uh, and they land in the kiosk every Thursday, but every Wednesday we do like a, a short teaser version of their big interview, and we say, okay, mm -hmm. this is one thing that she says, this famous person, for instance, and you can read the rest of the interview in the magazine that's being sold tomorrow. And we're doing that more and more because it sort of drives traffic up online, of course, but we also believe that it's, that it's, it's gold worth in branding. So, but we also want to do, do it more the other way, right? Because we want to have magazines, um, of course, publish stories that we, the original LPK stories that we write, we see a potential there as well for them to sort of publish them and say, well, you should read more on LPK, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? So we want to, there's room for improvement for sure as mm -hmm. well. We first have a question here and then we go back to you. Maybe you shout later because that's <laughs> a long way. Babette Kellerman, Cement Holland. I had the same question about the interconnection between online and offline in print. Yes. So thank you. Okay. Can, can you give, give us a figure about how many articles are spread online on these well, at the moment, different brands? At, at the moment, we have, uh, in total, we have. Yeah. 67,000 articles online, 12,000 recipes every week. I, I'm, I'm lifestyle editor uh, in the day to day, so I sit and I look through our magazines and say, okay, what, what content here would work online? Like we change headlines a lot, right? Because it's yeah. a different game. Um, and, uh, and we don't want to have three versions of the same, you know, avoid stress in December articles if we can avoid that, okay? We <laughs> want the best version, again, getting back to SEO. So mm -hmm. we make sure that we sort of we talk together and that we sort of collect the, the relevant content. So it isn't everything that comes up, because it also, of course, takes time to transfer from print to di digital, right? So we want to make sure that we use our resources smartly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in the very back, back yeah. Hi. Hi. That's a great question. You said Facebook pages, right? Yeah. yeah. 
So we have eight different Facebook pages that have a lot of followers. And we have our new LDK Facebook page with very few <laughs> followers. <laughs> and that is our big challenge. Like, how do we make this yeah. new site a, a super brand in itself? And we were, and it's sort of it's growing a lot. And we believe that it's going to be, you know, in the long run, it's going to happen by itself because we have great quality stuff online collected there. But right now we're sitting uh, managing many different Facebook pages, and we we sort of we want to get even more aware of how they differ because we there's also overlap, right? I mean, we cross post a lot of content because for Damon and you're a woman, they might think the same interview with a famous person is interesting. Often they do, so we sort of we spread that out and cross post a lot. But we also want to we make sure that the tone is a bit different when we're sort of uh, posting for women that are 50 plus versus the 24-year-olds, right? So we sort of, we think mm -hmm. a lot about mm -hmm. that, but we could get even sharper. Yeah. But do you have a lot of uh, uh, articles or research that is made or interviews that are led that you then really spread out in three different brands? We do. And you do it more and more in we do. talking I mean, cost if, efficiency, I mean, et cetera? Um, well, again, we, we sort of, if, if it's good content, which it often is when our magazines sort of get, you know, because of the strong, rich histories, they have, they have good access to famous people, people that are mm -hmm. the big in the lifestyle universe. So they, they write great stories that lot, a lot of Danish uh, people in general want to read, not just one brand, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we're seeing even more as we grow, this merging is also, also means that, that other media, newspapers, which again, we're pretty proud of because it's a different game. Um, they're looking to us, you know, that we can see they sort of take our stories, they quote them, they refer to us. So stuff is happening there. We mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. continue. Mm -hmm. Down that road. Kind of lost, yeah, last question from you again. <laughs> I thought of a better one than I'd asked before. So okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, uh, so in a way, you sort of collected data about uh, all of these different women's magazines. Yeah. So you may have been able to detect trends like, oh, we're writing more stories of a particular type for women. And then there might be, you know, okay, well, maybe this is a little gender stereotypey the, the fact that all age magazines are writing things like this, but maybe none of them are writing things like that. Mm -hmm. So I was interested, uh, did you uh, f discover that, that there were sort of things to work on in, in that sense? Well, actually, I just want to add quickly that 17% of our readers are actually male, which we think is great, and we think it's because of SEO, right? Because if you Google a recipe for something, martini, whatever, um, whoever you know finds us first will click, no matter the gender, and that's mm -hmm. great, and we mm -hmm. want to continue to broaden our audience like that. Um, but yeah, we see new trends all the time, right? I mean, that's the... The, the great thing about web is that we can instantly see, okay, so there's something in our, in, the in our time, in our era right now that means that people are very interested in this thing uh, versus that. And then again, we, we very much um, think, of, we think in two ways, right? We think uh, newsy stuff that's happening right now versus SEO. Mm. So SEO mm. might be, okay, well, we need a restaurant guide to Copenhagen and we need to make that the best version because, again, the organic sure. traffic will pour in and sure. it makes sense to Constantly. optimize that, mm -hmm. right? Versus the newsy stuff where mm. some TV presenter gives birth and everyone wants to know what's, it's, what's the baby's name. Uh, uh, maybe a bad example, but just like a newsy quick thing. So we sort of mix that, right? And then we have long, good interviews because we want, we want quality, of course. Yeah. Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you All very the best much. for your group, for your Thank team you. at home. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.